Book marketing has got to be one of the hardest lifts for an author, fiction or nonfiction, I would say. And if that is the case, and I know that is the case, there are different ways of marketing each of those books. And I thought we could spend this time today talking about exactly that, what some of the differences in marketing are to help you a little bit more on your book's own marketing journey. Hi there, my name is Lauren. I'm a book and marketing strategist, and I'm gonna kick things off by talking about what the purpose of each kind of book is, fiction and nonfiction. When it comes to fiction, a lot of the appeal is going to be in the story itself. This would also uh, apply to memoir as well. Memoir is a nonfiction book, but it is heavily narrative, and a lot of the appeal also has to do with the kind of story that's being told. So I'm gonna kind of lump those together just in the context of this video. When it comes to fiction and memoirs, a lot of it is about the plot or the uniqueness of the plot specifically. When it comes to nonfiction books, a lot of this has to do with the kind of perspective or solution or approach that you're presenting in your book based on your experience or expertise. So right away, you can tell that there's a pretty big difference. With fiction, it has to do more with the content. With nonfiction, it does have to do the content, but more so the outcome of reading that content, I would say. So those are some of the primary differences between fiction and nonfiction books. That's ultimately going to influence how you decide to market each of those books. Now, these are just my own thoughts, but a common misconception that I think a lot of authors and even authorpreneurs have is that they think their book is the sun and everything orbits around it, when that's really not necessarily the case because books are only new for a year in the eyes of the industry. Any book that's under 12 months is going to be considered a front list title. Any book that is about a year old or more is going to be considered a backlist title. And if you're working with a publisher or you wanna work with a, with a publisher, it's important to know that uh, the goal of every publisher is to have a backlist selection of titles that is so popular that they're gonna keep selling just because of word of mouth. Like the book is so good, people already know about it that it like, you know, where the crawdads sing, The Handmaid's Tale, any of like Carrie by Stephen King, like any of those books, Atomic Habits by James Clear, a lot of those are very, very successful um, backlist titles, just as an example to kind of help frame things a little bit. I think believing that your book is the sun with everything orbiting around it is applicable for franchise authors like Stephen King, Toni Morrison, for example, or like James Patterson or something. But for the bulk of us out there, there's going to need to be some kind of, there's gonna need to be something else to supplement the book. Otherwise people are gonna either get bored waiting for the next one to come out, or they're not gonna know what to do with themselves after finishing it if they really, really like it. So here's what I suggest. Instead of treating your book like the sun with your brand and everything else orbiting around it, treat your brand as the sun with other opportunities and experiences like your book orbiting around it. That way it's just a little more evergreen than treating the book as the ultimate thing. In a perfect world, this would look like developing your platform, loosely building a brand around that to give it some kind of structure for people to expect and be able to kind of remember it and categorize it and organize it in their head and then use those two things and leverage them to promote the book that you do have or that you're going to be writing. I would say that this is applicable to both fiction and nonfiction books because if you do it this way, in theory, it's going to be easier to promote it to an audience if sales is like the big thing that you're after or at least or at least an initial burst in sales. That's a lot of that is is due to having a book launch, which I think I might've talked about book launches on this channel before. It's going to be easier to promote that book and get more of a response from it because you've spent time building up your platform and your brand and therefore people like you a little bit more, know you a little bit more and trust you a little bit more. And finally, you've also used that time ideally to provide some kind of value before offering the book because whether it's videos, whether it's blogs, whether it's newsletters, whether it's doing a podcast, whether it's doing webinars or giving presentations at your local library or at your bookstore down the road, you need to be offering some kind of experience or solution or something or teach people something, whether you're fiction or nonfiction. You're, you're providing a lot of value in the beginning so that when you do have something to sell that people should buy or that you're charging money for, people have already kind of experienced you before and they're gonna trust that buying this thing, if all of that stuff before was free or low ticket, 
buying something that's 20 bucks is probably gonna provide even more value than what they were getting before. So depending on sort of the intentionality and the authenticity and sort of the depth of the value that you're providing in your content could lend really well to, to a model like that. So when it comes to your platform, it's worth thinking in this particular way. I'm gonna tell you, what kind of niche do you want to associate yourself with? It needs to be specific because the more specific it is, the more valuable it is. This is like business 101. Becoming an author is a business. You are creating an image and a brand for yourself. So with that brand, consider the niche or the type of content or subject matter you wanna surround yourself with or, or, or be associated with Think about the kind of people that absorb that kind of content or want to learn more about it. And then from there, think about where they're getting their information to inform the kinds of platforms that you should be exploring or playing around with or occupying yourself with. And a lot of this is just getting curious. It's just getting familiar. It's building that familiarity with the, ty with the types of different communication mediums that are out there and available to you. So if you're someone who's not super comfortable on video or you're someone who loves writing blogs or just loves the craft of writing in general, you know, different platforms can kind of have different styles or different ways of communicating. So you're just playing around with it, seeing the kinds of responses that you're getting and then use that to inform your brand and kind of putting a loose structure together once you start recognizing some of those patterns and getting feedback and responses and traction from the visibility and, and interactions that you're getting from the kind of audience and community that you're attracting and building. And the way that I define brand is asking yourself three questions. What is it you wanna say? Who do you wanna say it to? And how do you wanna say it? So like I said, it's all about picking a niche or a niche, however you say it, considering who pays attention to that niche or is in it or wants to learn more about it and then where they're at. And by combining both of those things, it's not only going to inform the direction, the long-term direction that you're building for yourself, but also the kinds of content that you're making for them that might ultimately lead to something a little bit bigger, like a book or any other launches that you wanna do. So for example, let's talk about book signings. That's probably one of the most common forms of marketing for authors specifically, fiction and nonfiction. And a lot of people, or I, I should say that most of the people that I've talked to were not totally pleased with the results of their book signing. And personally, in my own opinion, I don't think they're that effective, especially if you're a newer author. I think they're great for franchise authors like James Patterson or like Stephen King or you know, whoever, the, Colleen Hoover, like, because everyone knows their names. Who wouldn't want to get an autographed copy of Verity? I think that's the name, Verity, by Colleen Hoover. Apologies, I'm not, I'm not a Hoover fan. I haven't read her books yet, but I've just, I think that's the title of one. There are a lot of people in the world who would stand in line for probably a good two hours just to meet her, shake her hand, and get a signed copy of a book. That's, that's a pretty valuable experience. But if you're not Stephen King and if you're not Colleen Hoover or James Patterson, it's like you're gonna have to work to get people to want to come in and buy a signed copy from an author who may be pretty unknown outside of you know their immediate location. So what do you do in that instance using the information that I just talked about? You have to get people to care. People don't know who you are. They don't care about your book. You have to get them to care as a communicator by meeting them where they're at and letting them know that, hey, this is the kind of people that I target. This is the kind of stuff I talk about. This is the kind of experience that I provide through story formats, whether it's fiction or memoir or whatever. A great way to get people to care is by maybe hosting some kind of event at your library, at your bookstore, wherever. It could even be on an online meetup group. It doesn't even have to be in person. Extract an important educational piece from that book, especially if it's nonfiction, that you can maybe enlighten people on or bring more awareness to. If you are someone who writes fiction books all day long and you love the craft of it, maybe talk about how you got to publish your first book, how you self-published your book, how you approach writing thrillers, like there, some kind of educational nugget is going to be really, really valuable because there are people who too want to be a fiction author or a nonfiction author or build a brand or something. And there's something that you know that they don't, that you can easily pluck out of your book or you know extract from your experience as a whole as an author and use to benefit the collective or a particular group of people. People really like getting answers to things that they're curious about, even if it's just a really great story what piece of your author journey or of that story or of the type of craft that you do or the genre of craft that you write for, what little piece can you pluck out of that 
turn into a formula or a presentation or an organized outline of some kind that you could use to benefit someone else. And then at the end, once people are hyped up and they're excited and they're curious and they felt like they've been seen and validated and they've gotten some answers or maybe learned something new, that's your opportunity when they're at their peak to say, hey, you know what? If you're curious just to learn a little bit more about this, I happen to bring some extra copies of my book if that's something that you want to see how I applied the craft of writing thrillers to this book. Or if you want to learn more about how to get a job working in Yellowstone, that my book was about working in Yellowstone. You know, if I wanted to give a whole presentation on that, I could say, hey, here's what it looks like on the inside. You know, you can, your book is a tool. Your book is a tool for something bigger, depending on the type of vision that you have for yourself, the way that you are defining success for yourself. Books in general, the book industry as a whole, the publishing industry as a whole is extremely subjective. So you have to figure out who's going to care about this, why should they care about it, and how can I package it to convince them to buy this thing that I have or, you know, whether whatever kind of product it is. In this case, it's going to be a book. That's how you that's how you do it. You don't wait for people to come to you. You don't launch a book thinking, oh, someone's just going to see it on Amazon because it's doing so well, you know, because of all these immediate sales that I have from friends and family, they're going to read it and then follow me and want to buy it. I don't think that's a super realistic or at least sustainable way of thinking. You are entering into the author business when you decide to write a book, depending on how in-depth you want to get with it. And you need to provide additional experiences outside of the book because it would be such a shame. What I wouldn't want to have happen to you is you write a book, you spend years and hours of your blood, sweat, and tears pouring it into this book. It might it might even be your first one. Put it out there in the world. Someone really like it and connect with it. One person out of a hundred, let's say, I don't know. They go to your website and you got nothing else going on. You know, that's such a bummer. You just lost someone who could have turned into a community member. I think that's kind of the secret sauce when, when it comes to any kind of brand building or promotion or conversation starting is that you want to have engagement. Like views are nice, follower and subscriber counts are nice, but how do you get those subscribers and how do you get those follower counts? By getting people interested, by getting people curious, by giving them answers. It depends on how involved you want to get with this thing, depends on your goals, depends on what you value. So again, we're thinking of your brand as the sun with your book and everything else orbiting around it. Because if you think about it, books are an incredibly finite thing. They're only new for a year, which is not long at all. So what else are you going to do in the meantime to keep the waters warm? Because if you want to write another book, you have to keep people interested in what you have to say. You are the face of the brand and you have a lot of valuable insights that you can share, both fiction and nonfiction. So think about what it is. And a really good prompt to kind of help you with this might be think about an area in your life personally or professionally that you've really struggled with. Think about that. Then consider what would you say to your younger self or back when you were in that particular context or part of your life, knowing what you know now. And then how would you want to communicate that kind of information? What kind of experience would you want to provide that could help people in that same situation? Because what you've struggled with the most kind of makes you an expert in that thing because you're able to meet people where they're at. You know what they're thinking. You know their emotional journey. You know a lot. Like you, you know a lot. If you have struggled in a particular area and you've benefited from maybe that type of challenge, depending on what it is. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that you could use. Like you have a lot of, you have more than you think in your toolkit and it's up to you to use it. I'm just trying to give you a bit of an instruction guide to help you know how to use it or, you know, ways that you can leverage your different experiences. So bottom line, people like stories and answers, ideally both of them at the same time. It's like how kids need to eat their vegetables without knowing that they're eating their vegetables. That's why people make like cauliflower mashed potatoes with like butter in it or something, right? That's kind of what you're doing here. You want to provide an experience, an answer, a solution or something that is packaged up in a story of some kind. People like to feel seen and heard where they're at through a story, if it's fiction. People like to feel seen and heard through steps, actions, and processes, if it's nonfiction. So if that kind of helps you categorize it in your brain, then I've done my job. So if you found value out of this video, if you got something out of it, please consider liking and subscribing because chances are if you found something in it, someone else will too. And liking and subscribing helps other people discover the channel. And if you have any other additional thoughts, uh, things that you want to contribute to the conversation, definitely leave them down below. Otherwise I'll see you in the next video. Take care until then. Bye.